everyone. This is Rob and today I wanted to talk about expectations and in our quilting. I've been kind of in a crisis. I haven't made a video in the while and the reason is because I've been trying to get some of my UFOs turned out. I've been trying to figure out what direction I want to follow. I, and I've realized that by watching YouTube and other quilting narratives, we can have issues with our expectations because we have Elner Burns who coined the phrase quilt in a day that's the name of her quilt shop and all of her books telling us that we should have an expectation of being able to complete a quilt in a day but I was struggling I'm a slow quilter and uh, I have never thought I could do one in a day, but I have so many UFOs around this house, and I have so many projects that I want to start, so I thought I would discuss expectations. Work at your own speed. Enjoy this. This is... Uh, a fun hobby. This is a pastime. This is not your life. The people like Elner Burns and Jenny Doan with Missouri Star, Angela Walters, Tula Pink, Alex Anderson and Ricky Timms from The Quilt Show. The list goes on and on, but always remember they have staff. They have people to help them. You know, Elner talks about in her videos, you know, I gave this to Teresa to quilt, or uh, Teresa finished this up for me, or so-and-so did this for me. The same with Jenny Doan from Missouri Star. And uh, you hear it in all of these videos that they have help. They have multiple people working on these projects. And remember, three people can finish a quilt a lot faster than one person. So, I just wanted you to take a moment and realize what your expectations are. And I'm also going to show you what I've been working on since I haven't been making videos and the reason I haven't been making videos is because like I said I've been working on UFOs uh, I've started uh, I've been experimenting with a new project and I'm going to show you this I've been trying circles which are done in reverse applique and I can't decide if I like them or not, but I've, I've been working on this. This may come as a video later. Uh, I started in February a class via the Friends in Canada's quilt shop, uh, Dragonheart Quilts, which is in a little, little town called Pincher Creek in Alberta, Canada. And I started a quilt along from Susan Madhu called the Calendar Block of the Month. And it's using uh, Deborah, Deb Tucker's Studio 180 rulers. And I've gotten two blocks of this finished. This is... This is, the, this is the March block. We have a new block coming up this Easter weekend. And this was February's block here. Uh, 
So, let me see if I can get it out here so you can see. But it's a fun, it's a fun quilt along. I'm learning new skills. Uh, I love this with the sashed half square triangles and a giant half square triangle kind of look. And we're using Deb Tucker's Studio 180. This used the trim, the trim tool and the, uh, I forget what it is, but it's a magic wand. The magic wand, and that is a little half inch stick with a quarter inch line down the center for you to mark your seams on a square to make your half square triangles. Uh, and I'm enjoying it. I can't decide if I like the Deb Tucker tools, but we'll see as this project continues. I know I'm the only one in the group that hasn't fallen in love with them almost immediately, but there's just some questions I have and I haven't figured them all out yet, but we'll see in time. I've been trying to quilt my lace quilt. I basically got that half done and have been getting everything lined up, but I'm very, very unhappy with it. It is not quilting the way that I want it to quilt. The quilting's not turning out the way that I wanted, that I had envisioned. It's nice quilting, but it's not what I wanted it, what I was expecting it to be. And again, we go back to expectations. And I have a half square triangle project that I started a couple of years ago that I need to to finish piece. I have all, all of it done and it's in four big blocks and I need to put it together and, and then quilt it. And I have not done that. I have some embroidery pillows that I need to finish. I need to add the zipper to them. Uh, I have my blue and white project that I started that I need to finish. I have all these projects. So I haven't made videos because there's nothing to discuss. It's the grunt work. And, and you know, it's like, like this quilt. I spent days just sewing straight lines up and down this quilt to quilt it. And, and it's about half done. And I'm doing the quilt as you go on the back. Back. What's unique about this quilt is, let me get it here. What I did was each of these blocks is, the embroidery is done with the batting and uh, water soluble stabilizer on the back. These are, the sashing is actually one inch sashing, and, but how I did this sashing was to cut two inches, make a half inch seam allowance, so it comes down to one inch being shown, but then half inch of an edge from the top, the top and the bottom block. Or fold it when it's folded it makes it flat and when you sew the seams it's quilted because there's fa there's white fabric and batting and everything back there but then the back we'll get to the back let me turn it around The back here is basically 12 inch strips of fabric put on the back, right sides facing, and when you sew it down, you open it up and you have each row 
and then when you quilt it, you really can't see that this is a separate piece back because all the fabric is the same. It's a blue, ba blue uh, colors for quilters by Benertex that I had a bolt of and uh, they don't make colors for quilters any longer. It's color select or select colors or something like that now. And, uh, but uh, I had a bunch of this fabric left over. So, and it matched the blue thread that I was using. So I used it for the sashing and the batting. And, I mean, it looks okay. Uh, the quilting looks fine. I Just not what I wanted. But I'm going to get it finished and, uh, and have it done and, and say that it's done. But because the quilting doesn't look like I was expecting it to look, I'm no longer happy with the quilt. I'm like, I just want this done. Uh, so, but that's what I've been doing for the last month is trying to catch up and get things done. And one of the things when I realized that I was trying to keep up with people who had huge staffs in making videos and creating new content, I just realized I couldn't do it. It's just me. And I enjoy quilting too much. I enjoy making the videos. But I just don't want to make videos that every week it's me sewing straight lines across a block. I mean, I consider that boring. So, but as I start new projects, do new things... I will create videos for them. As I said, I'm doing this block of the month from Susan Madu through Dragon Hearts Quilt Shop. And uh, I'm learning a lot about precision piecing. I've been using a lot of the Acorn Precision, precision Piecing solutions. Uh, the uh, the Semaline glue and the pressing solution that they provide and let me tell you that pressing solution is amazing And I'll show you Look at these wonderful opened seams here how flat they are when you're using it as you're making and I used open seams because that's what Susan Madu recommended and I'm going to tell you, it's been a long time since I've actually pressed my seams open. And I think I kind of like this technique. Also, my Facebook group, Quilting on a Budget, uh, a few weeks ago had a trade show with David Martelli where he showed us all the projects. And I got a bunch of templates from them so there is definitely some new projects coming it's just I've got to find the time because we have a life even though we're in lockdown we still have a life today we're having 19 degree weather here in the Netherlands with lots of sun uh, and for Americans and others, that's about 68 degrees. I mean, it's beautiful weather. In a couple of weeks, the tulip fields will, should be in bloom. And I want to go spend some time with my partner and go visit the fields and see the flowers, which I enjoy every year. Because no matter how many times you go every year it's totally different and it's so inspiring all the colors and all the beauty and all the flowers and last weekend was H plus H in Cologne Germany 
this is the second year in a row that I haven't gone or attended. It was online this year, but all the demonstrations and everything are in German. So I didn't attend the online because my German is awful. <laughs> and when you go and you speak to the people like from Bernina or Mettler or Saju from Paris, they always have a booth or the fabric dealers. Most of them speak English as well. So you can gather your information and learn new things. But but like I said, it was my annual trip to Germany. And this is the second year I haven't been able to attend. And it's one of the things that I do, which has been canceled because of COVID. So, again... Back to expectations. Don't set your expectations too high. Do what you can and enjoy yourself. That is what this is all about, is having fun. So I hope everyone has a great week and we will talk again later. Have a good day. Bye.